Great. Okay, everyone. Welcome to Clubfly LA. Big thank you for Andrew for organizing this. And getting us all out to uh, talk about Taproot, of all things. Um, so uh, Andrew invited me to give... How many minutes do I have? Like 45? 30? Great. Okay, great. Let's see how long this takes. Um, <laughs> so uh, Andrew invited me to talk about... Do kind of the kickoff here and talk about... Uh, do a talk called... Oh, no, I can't click on it. That's fine. We'll just... Hold on. What is Taproot? Yeah, so this is about what is Taproot. Um, so we're going to talk through kind of what Taproot is. Uh, I might use the whiteboard. I might not. We'll figure it out. Um, great. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm Lisa, otherwise known as Nifty and I, um, on the internet. I run Base58, where I teach people about Bitcoin protocol. Um, I also work at Blockstream on Core Lightning. Uh, most of the stuff I do is like protocol stuff. Mostly it seems around liquidity protocol improvements, but yeah, that's my thing. Okay, cool. So, but we're here today to talk about Taproot. Um, so I'm kind of like, let's like, let's see how far we get. I'm going to be honest. This is like a little unscripted in terms of talk goes, but, uh, I'm really excited about talking through Taproot with you guys and we'll see where we end up. Um, great. Okay. What is Taproot? This is a great question. Uh, should I present my slides? I don't actually know how to do that. Figure it out. Okay, great. What is Taproot? This is a great question. Um, oh no, I can't do this. Okay. Taproot is, okay. So if you're like, all right, like what is Taproot? The first way when you're like kind of learning about a new thing, especially on Bitcoin, you're like, okay, well, Taproot is like a series of BIPs. Um, how many of you know what a BIP is? Almost everyone. Okay, great. It stands for Bitcoin Improvement uh, Plan, right? So whenever you get in trouble in Bitcoin and you need to get either worried about getting fired, you write a BIP and then... <laughs> no, okay. I'm a joke falling flat. It's fine. Okay, no, it's a Bitcoin Improvement Proposal, I think. Um, <laughs> uh, but basically, this is like a list or a series of um, typically... BIPs aren't like real structured. They're sort of just like essays about how to change Bitcoin. The well-written ones um, are specs also. Um, so for Taproot, there's actually... Does anyone know how many BIPs the thing? Someone says three. I mean, that's not the right answer. Four. Someone's going two. Okay, how many people think it's two BIPs? How many people think it's three BIPs, which I already said is the wrong answer? <laughs> <laughs> how many think it's like four how many think it's not four or two or three there okay it's actually by my count it's four so yeah <laughs> 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 um okay so let's talk through these so like the most obvious one is um so it's some bips okay cool what does that mean uh great question so glad you asked um uh what the Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, great, yeah. So the one that, like, I think most people kind of go to and they're like, all right, what is Taproot? There's one that's called Taproot, Segwit version one spending rules. So this is, like, this is BIP30341. Um, no, I don't know what the numbers mean. The only person who knows what... Does anyone know who picks the numbers? There's a human that picks the numbers. They have a name. Yeah, it's Luke. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so the only person who knows what the numbering scheme stands for is probably Luke, as far as I understand. So anyways, this is three, four, one. So this is one of, we said four, right? Okay, so this talks through SegWit version one spending rules. We'll come back to what this means later. Great. It's got a lot of text in here. They do like a design, an introduction. They talk about some of the history of why this exists here, which is really nice. Um, talks about a combination of technologies that they did. You'll notice this is... Bless you. This is kind of an extensive list. So there's a lot of new technologies, combination of technologies that we did. So we'll talk through some of these today in my 30 minutes. Um, and then they get into the actual specification. This is the good part slash hard to read part where they actually talk through exactly what a script validation is and how all the tap tweak stuff works, which is fun and exciting. Um, yeah, so this is specification stuff. And then there's kind of a more discussion section about how to construct and spend taproot outputs, uh, which is kind of nice. So this is like kind of what steps to follow if you want to actually make a taproot thingamadarn thing script. 
tap script, tap root thing. Great. Okay, cool. So that's bip one. All right. I said there's like four bips. So what's in the other bips? Why do we need other bips? That's a great question. Uh, well, you notice that there was this like list of technologies right in here. Um, so we need more bips to kind of introduce some of these technologies. One of the bips that we need to introduce the technologies of are... Okay, so the first bit is the most obvious one. Oh no, is 341. But then we also need this new technology thing in order to make Taproot work, uh, which is 340, which is Snore Sigs. Snore. Snore Sigs. Go back. So if we go back up to the listy thing. We can click back one and we get into the bit that this bit is Snore Signatures for SECP256K1. Great. Does anyone know what this stands for? SECP256K1? Two. Okay. Sorry. That was a nice. Um, uh, cool. Uh, okay, cool. So I always forget what the SEC thing is. It's like not the SEC, but it's a uh, <laughs> standard encryption standards for efficient cryptography. I don't forget. I forget. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 256 bits. Yeah, I explain it in there. I know it when I teach it in class somehow. I don't remember it now. It's fine. Um, right, cool. But we look at the SECP paper in class, which is fun. So she in for base 58. Fun stuff. Okay, cool. Uh, right, okay. So in order to get Taproot, we had to introduce something called Schnorr Signatures. Uh, we will talk about why we need Schnorr Signatures later. There's some cool stuff that Schnorr Signatures do. That ECDSA signatures, which is the, as I call it, signature signature scheme uh, that Snore replaces. Um, okay, so great. It's got this whole thing about, you know, we're looking at BIPs. BIPs are cool. It tells you why we're moving over. Uh, they're provably secure, unlike ECDSA, is my understanding. Um, stronger assumptions, which is kind of cool. So more better security. Um, they're non-malleable, which is fun. Um, ECDSA signatures are malleable. Uh, which SegWitch kind of fixed, but whatever. And then there's also this really fancy thing called linearity, which is what we're going to use for taproot stuff. So this linearity property is like the important one for taproot stuff. This other stuff is nice, like provable security is cool. It's kind of interesting. Okay, I'm sort of definitely there's no script, so I'm not off script, but this is off script. Um, it's cool that they say provable security, right? Like it's not like they made it better. They just made it more provable, which I think is kind of interesting. So it's like, it's not that like the security with ECDSA was necessarily weaker or stronger. It just didn't have as like, they weren't able to build like mathematical proofs about it in the same way that they're able to build them for Schnorr. So that's kind of cool. Um, here's a fun trivia question, because apparently this is also trivia hour. Um, does anyone know why Schnorr was not the original signature scheme for Bitcoin? It was a lot of hands, but I saw that one first. Yes, there was a 20-year patent that Mr. Schnorr made that they were waiting for it to expire. And so I think like, I don't know what, I know that Peter Willow was tracking it. And I don't know if it was like the day the patent expired or like the month that the patent expired that the these BIPs got dropped. But it was definitely all kind of in like within the same certain time period, which I think is interesting. Okay, cool. So we've got provable security, like I said, not necessarily you know, I don't know what you consider better or stronger, but just more provable, which is cool. Non-malleable signatures and this linearity thing, which is a cool property. Um, cool. What else is in this bit? It describes it. It does this key prefixing stuff. I'm going to just kind of scoochy scoochy. Has a whole specification for how to do them. That's nice. Specs are cool. Some bips don't have specs. This one does. It's called specification. It's right here. And it tells you all the stuff you need to know about how to do it. Um, it uses the same curve as ACDSA, which is kind of cool and interesting. So the like underlying, I call it crypto system in base 58. I don't know what the official term is for it, uh, is unchanged. It uses the same elliptic curve, basically with the same parameters as ECDSA stuff, which means that your like private public keys that you used for ACDSA stuff is all semi valid with some tweaks in Schnorr, which is cool. So you can kind of use all the same wallet software. You don't have to update that. Uh, you just have to update how you create signatures and how you validate signatures. Um, this is some like how you do the signing. Okay, I think we get the idea. And then it has this like cool section about applications. They talk about multi signatures and threshold signatures, which we're not going to talk about in this lecture. Maybe someone will talk about later. That's a question. Or are you going to talk about? Okay.
Yeah. So if we go back to Taproot, you'll notice that there is a list of technologies that you can't do Taproot without, right? So these were all, all of these BIPs were introduced at the same time with the idea of like, now that we've changed the signature scheme, here's this other cool, interesting thing we can add that is Taproot. Um, so they all were introduced at the same time. And you have to do Taproot script in order to use Snore signatures. So they're all definitely like as an architected product, all these parts interlock together. So you can't do Schnorr signatures without writing a Taproot address. If that makes sense. And there's like an upgrade path that was introduced in Segwit, which we might talk about. It's on my, it's on my list of slides. We'll see how far we get. Okay, where was I? I don't remember. Uh, we were looking at the Schnorr thing. I went too far. That's cool. It's this one. We're on Schnorr. Okay, cool. And so then we talk about music, threshold signatures, things, how to do those with Schnorr, et cetera. Um, that's not, I'm not, this talk is not about Schnorr or threshold signatures. So we won't be talking about music or frost or roast in this talk because that is not a taproot thing. Fun fact. That is a thing you can do because that now that we have Schnorr, you can do these cool things, but it's not really a thing that is inherent or needed for taproot stuff. Um, it's just something that tap. It's not even Taproot, it's like Schnorr enables, but you can't do Schnorr without writing a Taproot script. So you need that to get to Schnorr, but yes. <laughs> You're not wrong. It just wasn't done. We waited because Schnorr is much more elegant. It is. So. I think that's like the, the part to get a software game to be able to understand a couple things. Couple things. Couple things. Couple yeah. things. That's a that's a that's a nice way of saying it. Yeah, we're gonna get to that. But yeah, the op the. Tap script was needed because we changed the way that cryptographic signatures, the, the algorithms that you're using or like the signature scheme got changed. We'll talk about this in a second, but uh, basically one of the existing opcodes had to be the operation that gets executed when you execute a particular opcode is different depending on whether you're running a tap script level script or if you're running a pre tap root script, the interpretation of opcode changes, right? And the change is how it changes either ECDSA or Schnorr. But we'll talk about this is like in my slides, sort of. Sort of. Okay. Adaptive signature stuff um, is pretty much, I might get this wrong, but this is basically the adaptive signature stuff is what Taproot is. It's like an adapter. You kind of, I may be wrong about this, but I think, it's, I think I'm right. I'm going to like hand wave over that. Um, we'll get to what Taproot stuff is here in a second. And then, cool. okay, and then it's got some test vectors and reference code, but this is all the Schnorr stuff. Okay, so where are we? We're 15 minutes in and I've gotten through two bits. Great, okay. Um, this is 340, Schnorr. So you get Schnorr and then you get the Taproot bit, which was, um, ta oh, sure. Is that better? Great, okay, thank you. Um, okay. And then we already talked through, this is the SegWit version one. We'll come back to that because that's kind of a fun thing to talk about. Uh, okay, so I said there are four BIPs. Uh, let's keep going because I feel like I need to prove that this is actually correct. Okay, and then there was a third BIP, 0342. Uh, what does this do? It says title validation of Taproot scripts. Uh, okay, so some things that we've learned so far about Taproot, we've learned that it is a... Um, we learned that you had to, we added a new signature scheme called Schnorr. We learned that, what was the name of the last one? I forget. What was 341? 341's title was, we've learned that there was now SegWit version one. There's now a SegWit version one. We'll talk about what that means in a second. We learned that there's some spending rules. So we, we learned about all the spending rules on these. So this is signature validation stuff, taproot outputs. So we introduced new taproot outputs. Then we get into 342, which is, 
taproot scripts. So now all of a sudden there's something that's like a taproot script thing, talks about script ex uh, execution, rules for signature opcodes. So this is where I was talking about it takes existing opcodes and it remaps how they execute or how they work. So these are existing opcodes that prior to taproot scripts did one thing. And then if you execute it, in a version that says you're doing a taproot script, they now do something else. And this is the um, specification for how these opcodes should now act if and only if you're using a taproot script thing. Uh, what's kind of cool? Where is it? Oh, it's not in this one. Oh, here it is. Okay. Cool thing about this is BIP 0342 is it does this really nice, um, this is the nice specification. It tells you exactly what the conditions are for these rules on these opcodes to apply. So it basically says you have to have a input of a segregated witness spend, has to be a taproot, it has to have a tap script path identified as this, and you have to have a certain leaf version. Um, anyways, this is, I'm gonna hand weave over this, but it's kind of cool because this BIP at the top tells you exactly which um, inputs or like, yeah, is this inputs? Transaction input, yeah. So this is when you're looking at a transaction input, it has to pass these four kind of filters in order for the rest of this VIP to apply to it, which is cool, right? So it signs scopes like what part of a taproot, what part of a transact, when this, like the rest of this rules for signature opcodes are valid, right? So these new, it defines new rules for signature opcodes. And it tells you that they're only valid for inputs that pass this, like these four checks, which is cool. Um, and it tells you how to validate those exactly. This is like pretty well written spec. Uh, anyway, so this is BIP 342. So it tells you what inputs, um, I guess this is one. Yeah, so this is the one, I guess this is the BIP that redefines the opcodes that are now used in TopScript, which is cool. So 342 redefines some opcodes and introduces a new one. What's the new one that it does? It's not in here. Where's the new one? Yeah, it's listed somewhere. Where do they add it? Oh, here, following rules apply. So they added a new opcode called checksig add. Um, yeah, I have some opinions about checksig add. What are your opinions on checksig add? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just don't think it's going to get used very much. It's going to be, people are going to use roast froth stuff and not Chexig ad, but that's fine. It's cool. It's like kind of like, it was like a, like Chexig ad was kind of like a fig leaf. So that, so one thing that uh, TapScript did, which is mentioned in here somewhere, where is it mentioned? It disabled the script. Oh, here's what it does. Okay. Here's a list of things it does. These bips are like, in my opinion, very well written. Cause you can just be like, what does it do? Oh, look, here's like four four bullet points with bold about tells you what it does which is great okay so what does it do it disabled some script op codes so it used to be in scripts that were written prior to taproot you would be able to do an op code called op check multisig and op check multisig verify these op codes have been disabled in taproot so you can no longer do op check multisig or op check multisig verify they now return behave the same way as op return by failing and terminating the script immediately when executed. So if you write a tap script and you try to put one of these two op codes in it, it will not work. Uh, what did they do instead? They added a new one, which isn't listed in this thing. I don't know where it's like. Uh... Execution rules are the same as everything else, except for the following modifications, right? So these are just the things they changed. Consensus enforcement if this is one of those things that like I don't know great I don't this is like minimal if is like important but like you'll probably follow it anyway you don't have to think about it that hard just like don't put extra data in a script um yeah uh the success thing is cool there was a really good summary of this in the bit dev transcript from Thursday that was cool okay I'm gonna skip over that though and then signature opcodes are modified so these existing opcodes so they disabled object multisig and multisig verify, which is basically the same thing. And then they modified the behavior of check sig and check sig verify so that it now uses schnorr, which we already saw is in 340 instead of the ECDSA thing. And they added a new opcode named check sig add, which is at hex code 0xBA. So ba. Ba. Okay. And then here's the rules of how this works. And then, then it walks through exactly how this is going to work, which is cool. Checksig add one is like kind of fun. 
hard to read in here, in my personal opinion. But um, do they have an example of how it? Oh, and then they talk through uh, common signature message extension stuff, which I'm going to hand wave over signature validation, some cool stuff about resource limits. So um, it used to be that there was a maximum script size of 10,000 bytes. Uh, you no longer have that limit for tap script stuff. Um, there's no maximum non-push opcode limit for script. So they got rid of some limits, which is cool. Um, there's still a SIG op limit. Oh, wait, it says SIG ops and tap scripts do not count towards the block wide limit, which is interesting. I don't know. I'm going to like kind of, and then it's got a nice rationale section. They talk about optic success, which is different than op no op. Um, here's, okay. I thought this was interesting. Why are op check multi-sig and op check multi-sig verify disabled and not turned into op successes? Um, and they did it so that if you used it in a tap script, you would notice the problem immediately. Um, so that if you reuse a thing you're not allowed to, it'll fail, which is cool. Um, where's the like, there's like an example of, okay, so here's like the example of how to use check add. Do they have this like example of how you do it? Um, I don't know if I want to spend time explaining how op check ad works. You're not going to use it. Don't, this is like, you're not going to use it. You're going to use like frost or roast or music or whatever. Like this is, you're not going to do this. <laughs> Talk to Justin about how op check sig ad is. He's going to be the expert on it at the end of this weekend. Um, uh, yeah. I mean, I think like uh, there's, there's like, uh, uh, no, these are the options. You would you would use this option. It's like it's one option. It's the top of the list, but the one that you'd want to do is this one, the threshold signature stuff. That doesn't really work. <laughs> no, no. No, no, not no. I feel like I'm playing twenty questions. This is great. Any more questions? No. Uh, like okay. Um. Yeah. Okay. Name Schnorr. But anyways, uh, those are things that you can do now because Schnorr exists and Schnorr got added as part of Taproot, right? And Schnorr allows you to do lots of crazy, interesting protocol things now in signatures, but they're not part of Taproot. They're just a thing that the Schnorr signature part of Taproot enabled. If that makes sense. So they won't appear in these BIPs that we're looking through. Uh, no known public key types. I don't know. Okay. Da, 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 da. Talk about limit on opcodes. I mean, look, guys, you're going you're gonna to write really complicated scripts, but you're probably not going to run into the opcode limit. So like, let's be real. That's a challenge, yes. I dare you to try and find the SIG op limit on like, a valid use case for hitting the SIG op limit. Okay, what else have we got? Okay, let's go back to my presentation. Right, okay. Where are we? We're on slide four. We've talked through 342. So that's three. Okay, there's one more. Does anyone know what the fourth taproot one is? Justin, do you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's activation. <laughs> uh, cool. So that is... Uh, let's go back. And how do I get back to the bits? Great. Whee! All the way down to 340-something. 343! 13 months ago. Formatting, fixed formatting. Mandatory activation of Taproot deployment. That's right. The fourth bib. It's not a spec. It is a, wait, is it a spec? It does have a specification. Okay, it made a liar out of me. That's fine. Um, but you'll notice this isn't like nearly as nicely spec'd as the other ones, right? Like the other ones had like rules and like kind of if statements written into this. This is just like, yo, uh, the signaling period will begin at block height, whatever, with latest activation height of this. Lock in on timeout. Is that true? So this is like, these are just, this is, I mean, it's a spec, but it's not like, you're not going to implement this, right? Those are just like, this is almost like rule things. I don't know what this Bitcoin reference implementation. Okay, cool. Yeah. So this is like very short. As the reference says, it's like, yeah, this is, you're not, you're not going to use this when you're working on taproot stuff, which is probably why most people forget it exists because it's not really, it's not really like useful or interesting anymore because taproot got activated. Okay. Cool. Those are the bits. All right. What's else in my slide presentation? Let's go find out. All right. So Taproot is a series of bips. Uh, one of them talked about, let's see, 
first one, I don't have notes on what I did. Uh, three, four, one was like the, I don't actually know what this is. This is like the, oh no, presentation is going to end in 10 minutes. All right. Well, I better wrap it up then. Um, yeah. Great. How far are we going to get on this? Okay. That's cool. Three, four, one was like V1 SegWit scripting shit. I don't know. Stuff. Which we're going to talk about what that means here short, shortly, I think. Okay, cool. So Taproot is a series of bits. Great. All right. That was like informative, but probably not whatever. Taproot is also... What else is Taproot? Taproot is also SegWit. It's SegWit V1. Uh, does anyone know what this means? Let's talk about it. Let's talk about what this means. I need another thing. I'm not prepared for this. This is fine. Um, let's go to the blockchain. That's fun. That's always a solution to our problems. Let's go to... Info. Am I going to be able to do this live? Let's find out. Okay. Let's go find... Okay, so let's go find a SegWit script. Oh, no. Okay. Yes, I do not mind. Great. Okay, so does anyone know what I just did? I went to a blockstream.info and I found a block. I found block number 741316, which I think happened like... <laughs> how do you that's not what i'm looking for uh, oh okay um so that's, that's very useful that's not what i'm looking for um uh great okay so we're looking at things this, i'm looking at these things so these are for the uninitiated these are um these are bitcoin addresses that got made into outputs right this is a P2SH pre-segwit style base58 encoded output. This is a pay to wit. No, this is a pay to public key hash base58. This is not interesting. This is pre-segwit. So anything that's pre-segwit, like we're just gonna forget about it. It doesn't exist. Um, the stuff that like, okay, so then it's like, all right, so then segwit happened, I don't know, how many years ago? Four years ago, five years ago, a while ago. Segwit was a big, uh, I like to call it the Bitcoin omnibus bill because it changed how um man i only have 15 more minutes okay great great we definitely got content um the what do you call it the it changed the way that bitcoin a lot it changed like a lot of stuff um taproot kind of like builds on top of a lot of the things that segwit changed one of the things that it builds on top of is this change in how bitcoin addresses are expressed and sent etc um so this is a this address is a segwit style oh am i gonna be able to I don't know how good my ha. Okay, cool. Um, okay, so this is a this is a SegWit script address. Yes. Um, every SegWit script address begins with. So let's talk. I mean, like, oh no, what am I showing you? Nothing. Okay, that's cool. Um, okay. Great. Um, let's just them. Hello. Okay. We've got some space now. Okay, so I found this on the internet and I put it in my browser, right? This is a Bitcoin address that this is the address. I don't think I'm going to do a great job explaining this. This is fine. This is the batch 32 encoded address for SegWit. This is a SegWit thing that got introduced in SegWit. Um, no, I can't explain. No, I don't remember what BIPs it is. I think it's in like the 140 range of BIPs, like BIP 140 something, question mark. I don't know. Details. Anyway, so the segment got introduced in a series of BIPs that were back in the 100s. Um, and it explains kind of what those things are. But the interesting thing about this, interesting thing about SegWit versus Taproot is that for a, um, I guess we could go look up the BIPs, but I'm feeling lazy. So I'm just going to talk about it. Um, you'll notice that there is a, how many of you, are familiar with scripts. If you just look at it, you know what you're looking at. <laughs> um, okay, so typically in scripts, there are two things in a script. There's data and there are opcodes. Um, this one, so segwit, segwit, like locking codes, script pub keys, script pub keys only ever have data. Um, Cool, so there's no opcodes in here. Um, so this first one is just a number. It is, so this is like written in hex, whatever. And then if you take this and you put it through, I'm running my Bitcoin CLI. Bitcoin CLI. Great. Okay, so 
So if you just pop it into decode script, it tells you the address, which matches what we found on the internet, right? Matches this. Does it not? Does not match that. Wow, that's embarrassing. Oh, thank you. Okay, yeah. Oh, you're right. Okay, I see it. I see it. I see it. Um, so, yeah, as I was say, fun fact. Let me do the fun fact that these things. Yeah, the check is different because the prefix is different. Yeah. Okay, cool. Cool. Anyway, so this is the same data. So notice here, right? The first the same. So this is this is on this is the same address on reg test. I put that in so you can see it. This is the reg test address. I'm like, man, I'm running out of time. I only have 10 minutes. Okay, let me keep going. Wow. Okay. This is the main net address, whatever stuff, same data in it. That's cool. It's the same data. Uh, the same data that it has inside of it is this data right here. This is the data. If you take this and you re-encode it as hex instead of as fetch32, which is as it, this is what it's encoded in here. You can re-encode it as hex and you get this. Great. Okay. So that's where the hex comes from. And then you can translate it to something called ASM, which is like, short for assembly, but it's kind of like a human readable if way of doing it. This first part here becomes a zero, and this next part has a length prefix and then some data. So when you move it down, all that you'll see is a zero, and then you'll see the data part here, the length prefix gets deleted, right? So there's two pieces of data here. There's a number zero, and there is a uh, just some like, uh, what, 20 byte hash? That's a 20 byte hash. So that is that is the SegWit address. This is in SegWit. Okay, so how do you know you're looking at a taproot script? The difference is that all of so everything in everything in SegWit, which is the four top script, taproot, taproot, four taproot, uh, this number right here is zero because they are all SegWit was considered witness. Oh, you can even see it, D0. And you can see this when you pass it through decode script, it tells you it is a witness D0 key hash, et cetera. Okay. The big difference in scripts and the way that, like, we were talking about how the opcodes changed, et cetera. How do you tell, like, a Bitcoin node that you're now using the new rules for opcodes, et cetera, that are included in whatever top scripty thing? Um, the answer is you change this number from a zero to a one. So all of taproot things, everything in a taproot on chain is known as witness v1. Um, and I think that, I think I can, like, I think I can like kind of buff this thing and just change this to a one. Is that gonna work? I don't know if that'll work. Let's find out. How mad did you get at me? Is it zero? Yeah, but it might still work even if I don't do the 20 bytes. That would be actually be 32 bytes, but no, didn't like it. Guys, guys, you're on here. That's fine. Um, how much data do I need? I just click the Python. It's not 32, is it? Yeah. That works. It might not work. There might be some rules here that it's going to like fail on. It's fine. Cool. Okay. You guys aren't here to watch me fumble with stuff. Cool. Um, this is like sort of. <laughs> ah, I sure see one. I don't know. Okay. It's like. Mm, 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 No, it's got the Q on it. Oh. Anyways, I don't know how to do this. It's fine. Cool. Yeah. Uh, now I see. Get new address. We will type. No. Oh. Okay. 
I think my version of the Quentin School version of it doesn't give me an address name for whatever. Version. I think 22. Yeah, mm, that's embarrassing. Okay, cool. Great. Okay, one second. Off the bridge. Uh, here we go. Oh, cool. All right, right. I'm not running a Bitcoin course thing that lets you do. Oh, thanks. Okay, cool. Great. Thank you. I don't know how important this is. This is not what's this sign. I just put some under sign on this. Cool. Whatever. Uh, I don't know if you can just get out of your info. Uh, and I can't share my screen unless you change it. Great. Okay. Do you need permission to record or are you like, I got you. okay, great, 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 great. I don't think my Bitcoin version is going to know about this. That's fine. I don't think you need to get access to so Let's see what happens. Actually, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Uh -huh. Right. Yeah. My Bitcoin is too old. Great. Good story. Mm -hmm. I don't All of my Bitcoins are too old. Fun fact. Okay, great. Very thanks. Fine. Okay, cool. Uh, right. So I don't know how to quickly decode this to the thing. It's fine. Whatever. I'm hand me over it. Basically, the general idea is that this like thing, the prefix thing, is now not witness D0 anymore. It's now witness D1. Um, we only have like five more minutes. I don't want to take up too much time, but um, apparently it takes longer than 45 minutes to explain what Taproot is. That's so cool. Seems reasonable. Um, anyways, but okay, so fun fact about Taproot, it's D1. The way that you indicate that you're now using new opcodes that got introduced to D1 is that all of your scripts now start with the one prefix, which is cool. Um, Taproot is also short signatures that we talked about. This introduces new opportunities to do interesting, cool, fun, hidden things. Um, introduce these new scripting things that we went through, like opsig, modified to optech sig, it added check sig add, which is cool. It added something called a new sig hash algorithm. Um, this is kind of like arcane Bitcoin knowledge. Sort of arcane Bitcoin knowledge. This is like supposed to be the intro, so we didn't even get to the fun stuff. Um, uh, what was I talking about? Sorry. Clearly. New sig hash algorithm, which is in which bit? It's in bit 341, I think. No, it's in. Get validation? No, they didn't get validation. No, no. Big method. Yeah, here. It's defined here. So now there is a new definition of how to pre impute a sig hash for a transaction. Um, two fun things that are in this, uh, which I think are cool and interesting and relevant to my personal interest. Um, here they have like a little summary. Ooh, great. These books are so great, y'all. They have like a summary. It's like in summary. Here's the spec of how to compute these. So this is like the formula that you would follow to compute a sig hash for a taproot input, um, a taproot script input. That means the script input has the one at the beginning, which is cool. Um, so here's the exact formula that you would follow. There's some flags that modify this. So if you're using the flag, you can kind of follow what it's supposed to do. You follow it exactly, you'll get the right answer every time. Isn't that great? Then it has this nice cute little summary at the bottom where it's like, okay, you don't want to read all that. It's just the same as VIP 143, which if you take 658, we will walk through how to implement this by hand in class. Super fun. This is the old serialization. This is the SegWit they have serialization formula thing. They updated it. It's now this one here. This is the new version. This is seg taproot, taproot. And they tell you what they changed from the old one. So the way in order serialization has changed, that's cool. Um, this is really important. I like to think that this actually got added because of a conversation that I had with some people. Um, SegWit signature message now commits to the script pub key of the spent output as well as the stuff. So that if you commit to the script pub keys of the output you're spending, which means that um, this has cool implications for some protocols I've been working on. Um, 
this is new and different. Uh, the thing that's kind of interesting for people who are building apps with Taproot is that the annex gets added to these big hacks. Um, we're not going to have time to talk about the annex, but I literally have three more minutes. We're not going to get there. But um, when you hear about the annex, annex actually gets added to big hash and things it gets submitted to. Annex is basically like this extra data that you can put into witness data for Taproot spend. Um, and throw it away. It doesn't get validated. There's no validation rules on it currently in V1 script stuff, but it does get committed to. So that means that no one can change this like signature data that you add in is but kind of a fun important thing. Okay. Uh what else? What else? What else? Uh let's go back to this. Great. Okay. So there's like all this new signature stuff, a new stick hash algorithm, this option should change. What else is Taproot? Taproot is also a way to include arbitrary data in Bitcoin via annexes, um, which we're not going to have time to get into, but this is a fun, interesting thing. If you want to learn more about annexes, they are in BIP 341, I think. I think they're, in, yeah, they're in 341. I think I can go look. We can go look at that. Um, it it is it's part of the signature, so it's it's included in the signature. So the signature commits to the data in the annex. So it's like um, it's committed to data, but it's thrown here. Let me go look at the bit. It's got like very clear language. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think Taro is going to use it. I think yeah. this is how Taro is done. Yeah. It's a way that you can add extra data to the thing. Oh, I'm uh, great. Okay, so this. Okay, here, here we're still in BIP three forty one. I think yeah. There's script validation rules. We didn't. We're not. I don't have time to talk about script stuff. Uh, this is really tragic because we didn't get to talk about the fun things about what a taproot is. That's fine. Uh, okay. Um, so the, if there are at least two witness elements and the first byte of the last element is 0x50, so you have to like annotate that you're including data in the witness stack that is annex data. And you do that by putting a byte 050 at the beginning of it. It has to be the last element in the witness stack. It is called an annex and it is removed from the witness stack before you begin validation. So it is included in your witness data, but when you're starting to do script validation roles, that's the section we're in, it gets thrown away. Um, but it's always covered by the signature and we just saw how it's covered by the signature because they modified the sig hash algorithm. We looked at that briefly um, and it contributes to the transaction weight. But as uh, Justin was saying five seconds ago, um, there's a discount for that because the SegWit rules, again, like I said, Taproot builds on SegWit stuff. SegWit was Bitcoin omnibus bill number one. Taproot is Bitcoin omnibus bill number two. Um and it builds on top of it, so you get like a discount by including data in the annex. Great, fun story. Okay. Well, your signatures won't validate if you don't transmit it, right? Yeah. So you have to you have to pass it along. Yeah, it has to be like yeah, that's what you're asking, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, what else is Taproot? Taproot is like the most exciting thing. And this is the last slide. It's an idea for how to hide your intention of what you're trying to do on the blockchain. Uh, I don't have time to talk about this. Hopefully, someone else will pick up here. Um, I feel like this is where I shall come to base 58. We will be doing a taproot class and we will talk about how you hide your intention, how all these cool new fun things that we've added, which are taproot versioning and scripting and Schnorr signatures all combined to be able to make taproot scripts and mass miracle trees, etc. cetera. Um, that all of this like new cool stuff tells you how to hide your intention. And there's a really great something in here. Oh no, we're off track. Where'd it go? Here it is. There's a really great uh, 2018, January 23rd mailing list post from Mr. Gregory Maxwell himself um, about uh, how Taproot is this priving, privacy preserving switchable scripting, which all these things that we introduced in all the BIPs now enable. So unfortunately, uh, in my 45 minutes, we talked about all the things that Taproot is in a very practical BIP oriented sense of what it's changed, what it's added, the new signature screams, etc. But we did not talk about... Um, why we want this and how it makes cool stuff happen. Um, this, it's not a blog post, mailing list post is a um, pretty, it's not as high level as you get, as I would make it, but um, kind of an introduction of why you would want something like this. 
etc. Okay, cool. I think I'm out of time. Sorry, I didn't get to the fun stuff, but next time. Thank you.